Hey there guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week six of the NPCC. Last week, uh, we won against Fearless Fear and the LA Dodrios. Sorry for spoilers if you haven't seen that game already. Um, you should have by now, really. Um, so we're on a two-game win streak, and we are uh, taking on New Age Steel this week. And I have I am a terrible person because I have forgotten the name of his team. Um, it's the new something some things let me just have a quick look because I feel really bad if I don't say that I'm not all too familiar with these uh, alliterative names or the that's the wrong spreadsheet or the um, American sort of sport teams so yeah while I find out the team name as you can see um, both teams have got some very scary things going on this uh, week um, main thing I'm scared of <laughs> this week um, the rather spooky Kyron Black I mean who isn't scared of Kyron Black, and uh, I've just got it. It's the Antelope Valley Agrons. There you go. That's who we're playing this week, uh, managed by New Age Steel. Um, yeah, that Kyron Black is kind of scary. If it's scarfed, it's kind of going to kill things, but it can lock itself so I can play around it. Uh, if if it's not scarfed, I'm going to be a happy bunny because that means Mega Septile is ready just to tear his team a new one. I'll go quickly over what I've got. I've got um, slightly offensive, special defensive, Mesprit, uh, Assault Vest, Bulky, um, Jolteon, because his team is actually very slow. The only thing he has above 100 base speed is Mega Metric. The rest is uh, below 100. Um, Mega Sceptile, especially offensive this week. Not the physical that I've normally been bringing, which has been having a lot of success. Um, Life Orb Entei, physically defensive, Toxic Spikes, um, Cofagus, and the specially offensive Nidoking. Toxic Spikes, I gave some extra emphasis because Toxic Spikes this week are super important and worked out really well because my only opponent's only defogger is a Golbat and he hasn't got any ground poison types. And looking at his team, if I can poison his Umbreon and his um, Slowbro, then that will be absolutely amazing. So I'm going to lead off with my Mesprit in hopes I can lead um, by putting my Rocks up because he hasn't got a spin up. He leads off with, with this thing. And I'm afraid it's going to set up rocks and other sorts of hazards. So I want to just kind of get some offensive pressure straight off the bat. He could have tried to paralyze me here. But luckily, well, I was really expecting the stealth rocks. Neither of us have got defoggers. Neither of us have got rapid spinners. So any hazards that are set up are here to stay. Um, I spoke to him after the game. He wanted Spike's hazard stack to work with his Kyron. Because his Kyron could one-shot me with uh, Spike's up, basically. Which, uh, yeah, that's true. Because I knew it just kind of destroyed me anyway. Uh, I'm going to go into Old Man Tut here though, predicting the switch uh, with the uh, into the Slowbro. So early game double switch uh, shenanigans, so kind of get my prediction pants on this uh, game, which is a good sign putting my opponent on the back foot um, already. And now I have my Kofa Grigus in here for free, even if he's a Salt Vest, I mean Shadow Ball won't do too much, but he can't do too much to me in return. Um, he does bring in his uh, Rotom Heat, which might confirm it's special defensive, I don't actually think I find out this game. I'm going to set up my Toxic Spike, so the only things that aren't affected are Ferrothorn and this thing because it levitates. His Umbreon, his Kyron Black, his Slowbro and his Mega Manectric all get affected by the Toxic Spikes, which is fantastic. Um, so I'm going to stay in here because this thing cannot Oko me. I'm scared he might Will-O-Wisp, but I don't want to switch into my Entei because Entei is very important if I want to take down the uh, Ferrothorn pretty easy. I am set up uh, with other things though to take it out. Uh, I do get my second layer of Toxic Spikes up here. I, just, I, I mulled over wherever I needed two layers. Then I thought, if he's going to sit in here and try and storm me out with Slowbro and or um, Umbreon, Toxic uh, Poison rather than just normal Poison is going to be a lot more beneficial for me. Uh, now I know at minus two he can't kill me unless he gets a crit overheat, otherwise I'm fine. So I'm going to click Pain Split because most of his team, well all of his team is healthy um, and I will get as much health back as possible. So Mega Manectric is only speedy mon, the only thing he has in his whole squad over 100 base speed. Um, I deliberately made my Mega Sceptile max speed this week just so I can run the risk of a speed tie if I have to. Um, but that Pain Split along with Toxic is going to bring this thing down to nearly half and it hasn't even got its Mega Evolution up yet. Um, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I have got a relatively safe switch into this thing and that is my Assault Vest Jolteon. Um, I've, I'm modest with very little speed investment because I outspeed everything. I can't outspeed Mega Manectric anyway. Um, but this outspeeds anything that isn't scarfed on his team. Um, and the rest is in HP, just kind of, you know, to complement the Assault Vest. He is going to Mega Evolve here, and I was pretty ha oh, confident he wasn't going to click an Electric move, because Sceptile isn't Mega up yet, but I do have my Nido King, and I do have this thing, which are all immune to electricity. Um, 
it was really key that I bought as many electric immunities as possible. I have three. Um, and this thing, you know, is the only fast thing he has. So if I could sort of wear it down really quick, uh, I can win with speed. Um, so after Toxic and the Overheat, he's at minus two now and he's at half his health. Uh, he can't kill me. Um, so he's going to have to switch out here. Uh, he could have stayed in and done more damage. I, pr I don't think I could actually have killed him because the only thing I had to hit. Oh, actually, I hit in power ground. But I'm expecting him to switch um, into the Rotom. I can't really hit this Rotom for any damage. I found that out last week because I had to fight a Rotom Heat then as well. Um, but I'm going to Volt Switch to get myself some momentum. And I'm going to go into my one love. Um, I don't really mind if this thing burns me. Yes, I have physically, I'm sort of physically biased with U-Turn and Knockoff. But they're more utility and momentum moves. So I don't really mind uh, him burning me if that's what he chooses to do. Uh, I'm going to get myself rocks up because he can't spin them away. And with my rocks up and toxic spikes, two of his grounded mons are... Uh, Badly poisoned already, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm going to knock off this Umbreon's leftovers, and that's really going to hinder it because it leaves it to um, Wish Protect just to heal itself. Um, I'm going to stay in. I know he'll probably click Foul Play. I'll live it because Mesprit is bulky, um, and I want my rocks up because, well, it's super effective. So yeah, actually, I didn't go for uh, Stealth Rocks on the Switch. I clicked Knock Off because I thought, what what isn't nice when uh, what what Pokemon isn't nice when it hasn't got an item? So we do get the Knock Off off which is um, really nice and this thing is now going to start getting seriously hurt um, by the toxic. I'm going to U-turn out here and I do get a crit. Um, not sure it mattered in the long run, probably just sped up the inevitable death of this Umbreon. Um, but I'm going to bring Old Man Tut back in because Foul Play does absolutely pitiful damage to me even though uh, it, it's super effective. I mean Cofagrigus' physical attack is like base 50 or something, and uh, that, this is a super effective here. It does less than 20 damage, and he doesn't have Synchronize anymore. Not that it matters, because he is poison. Um, but now this thing, uh, it can't really kill me here, and I'm just free to click Shadow Ball. If he wants to switch, it, the Umbreon will die on switch into rocks, and it's also got Toxic. Um, and he could have stayed in here and gone for the last ditch wish, but he decides to Toxic my... Uh, Cofagrigus, which is fine because Cofagrigus at this health really isn't doing much for me. Um, it's pretty much just Death Order at this point. Uh, <laughs> Shadow Ball isn't going to kill because Umbreon is a special defensive monster. Um, but honestly, uh, I knew it was going to die to Toxic anyway uh, this turn. The only other move I have is Destiny Bond. Um, and that was just kind of like a last ditch thing, you know, if, if I could live a hit from Kyrian Black and then sort of force him not to attack me. Um, but the Toxic brings me back to where I was before, or at the end of the last turn. So in comes the Chiron Black. I have no idea what the set this is going to be. I'm kind of hoping he goes for Dragon Claw, because I think at this amount of health I have a chance, a good chance to live. Um, unless he's Life Orb, then I think I'm doomed to die if he's Adamant Nature. Um, but he reveals he has Ice Beam, which I was expecting, because obviously that's Chiron's best Ice Stab it gets. And it does take me out. But this gives me the vital information that this Kyrie in black is Life Orb, and after Stealth Rocks and the fact it's poisoned and Life Orb, I can now safely bring in Mega Sceptile, and now the damage just starts. Um, he has not got a special defensive switch in anymore because his Umbreon's dead, which is fantastic. Um, I do have Focus Blast in this thing anyway, so I don't think Umbreon would appreciate a Dragon Pulse and a Stealth Rock switch in and a Toxic Turn and Focus Blast. So, yeah, at this point. Um, Sceptile is free to get any kill at once. Um, I do Mega Evolve, obviously, because you have to turn one. And I decide to click Substitute here, just in case he stayed in. He can then take a bit more Life Orb um, recall. But then, you know, I also thought... Well, I, I would like to see what he wants to switch into here. I could have just Dragon Pulse twice, I think, and killed this thing. Um, but as you'll see on the, this next turn here, I go for the Dragon Pulse because it's the best thing I have. I only have Giga Drain and Focus Blast as my other moves. Um, I do score a crit, and that really, really helps out taking out this Rotom Heat and speeding things up. Now, I don't know if it was uh, that important in the long run. It would have made things a lot more interesting if this thing had stayed alive. Um, but because of the crit, I can now definitely take this thing out with a Dragon Pulse. Um, and that's absolutely fantastic because, well, Mega Set targets a first kill. As a special variant, every kill I've got with it so far is when it's a physical variant. Special variant wasn't working. I get another crit, so I've got three crits this game. Um, so actually, I think two of the three crits might have mattered a lot. So yeah, I did get a bit of a helping hand at this point of the battle. He brings in the Ferrothorn. He doesn't know that I had the Focus Blast, maybe. 
or the hidden power fire, he's kind of banking on that, but I don't think it will kill, and he'll have the gyro ball. So I go into this thing to actually sack it off, because I expect gyro ball to kill this thing, but it actually does nothing, because I remembered I'm sassy nature, because I'm bulky and fast and disgusting, so... Um, I get some leftovers, and after the leftovers, Jerry Ball isn't doing too much, but he still has his leftovers on. And I want to get rid of his leftovers as soon as possible, and then I want to get out of here as soon as possible, because I don't want him setting up more spikes, because Entei is life orbed, um, and I don't want it to take so much spikes, because it's pretty much my one sure way of taking this thing out late game. Um, but he misses the Leech Seed, so I'm really getting quite lucky this game so far. Uh, he misses the Leech Seed. And I've got three crits, two which probably matter. Ice Beam is my sort of specially offensive move, um, because he had Golwat and Trevenant, um, which were weak to it as well. Um, otherwise, which could be decent switch-ins. Obviously, I could have run a Psychic move, but I want to take that Trevenant super effective in case he got like a stally subset for some reason. Um, so, he does hit me with Leech Seed this time. Um, I'm going to U-turn out of here. I know that Iron Barbs won't kill me, um, and I know that I'll end up doing more damage to myself. But I don't really want to, um, well I could have just hard switched really, it doesn't really matter though, um, as you'll see later on in the battle, uh, but I just wanted that Leech Seed off because I didn't want him recovering any more health, um, because I need this thing as weak as possible to kill it. So I go into Nido King here, kind of scaring him out with the um, Flamethrower potentially, I'm not actually carrying it, I have Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt and Focus Blast, so Focus Blast is my uh, move of choice here. Either way, he has a safe switch into Slowbro, so he thinks I am going to be safe this time and click the Focus Blast, um, mainly because I want that thing as worn down as possible. But, you know, the Toxic Spikes come into play again, Slowbro is badly poisoned and is hurt by the Stealth Rocks, and just to make up for the hacks that have gone my way so far this game, I am going to miss the Focus Blast. doesn't really balance it out, but it, it, it's a start. Um, so I am going to stay and I am going to click Thunderbolt. I am not sure if this thing is probably a Salt Vest because I haven't seen Leftovers. That doesn't do much damage at all, actually. It does less than half. Um, but I am actually pretty bulky on Nido King because, once again, his team's so slow. And uh, my base speed means that I can't really outspeed any of his faster mons, but I will outspeed all his bulky mons without speed investment. So I thought, let's go bulky Nido King. Why not? And I do live on free. I do get burnt, of course. But hey, Revenge Axe is beautiful. Not that it really matters because I'm special. I click Earth Power just in case he wants to switch back into Ferrothorn. I did want to click Focus Blast in case he stayed in, just like this, um, because Earth Power and Toxic will probably kill this thing. Just go for the Ice Beam here, you'll see I was carrying the Yachi Berry. Uh, if I had near full health, uh, I would be able to live a Life Orb Ice Beam from a um, Kyron Black, and then obviously would have been able to retaliate it with Focus Blast. Um, so that's why I had the Yachi Berry, that was one of my few contingency plans for it. So I go into my Mesprit now because I kind of want this thing to die, I want to get a free, I mean I could have had a free switch into um, Sceptile anyway, but I thought I'd scout out and see what he wanted to bring in. He could have bought in Manectric if I brought in Mega Sceptile and I, I don't want to risk the speed tile with that thing at all because it, we're both 145 base speed. He actually reveals Roost on this uh, Chiron Black. I click, I mean luckily I click U-turn because um, that lets me get uh, my offensive pressure back. It does decent damage considering it's not Stab. And after the poison, uh, he's in range from a Dragon Pulse from my max uh, special attack, max speed uh, Mega Sceptile. And if you look at his team, he has a Ferroform, which is at half health, a Mega Manectric, which is at half health, and a Chiron Black, which is at half health. All of which I outspeed or speed tie with, all of which I can absolutely destroy with uh, my moveset on this thing. So I go for Dragon Pulse, kill this Chiron Black, which is fantastic. Now, he brings in the Ferrothorn, probably expecting me not to be able to deal with this thing with my Sceptile. I am carrying Focus Blast, and as long as it hits, um, I pretty much guaranteed the win, because I've got Extreme Speed on my Entei uh, if needed. And I do land the Focus Blast, so I missed the Focus Blast earlier. Um, luckily, I hit this one, and all he has left now is a Manectric at half health. I'm going to play Risky here, it's going to be a Speed tie, but I'm going to stay in with my Mega Sceptile, because I need to play for Differential now if I want a chance of getting in the playoffs of this thing. Um, and considering the way Hax has gone with this game for me, of course I win the speed tie, if it was a speed tie, I don't actually know if he was running max speed or not, um, I assume he was, and Dragon Pulse takes that thing out. So we do get the 4-0 win, I believe, over the, um, what was the team name again, I forgot what the team name was, Antelope Valley Agrons and New Age Steel, so great game man, I'm really sorry that Hax played such a significant part in that game, I didn't actually realise it until I went to narrate the game just now, how important that Hax was, but... 
Hopefully all our games going forward are as hack-free as that. So if you guys did enjoy this video and you appreciate how amazing Mega Sceptile is now, because I sure as hell do, um, leave a like, leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of this battle and, uh, well, anything else I guess, just, just talk to me, I'm lonely. Um, and if you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a subscription to my YouTube channel. Otherwise, I will see you next week um, for my Week 7 game. And I don't actually know who I'm against, let me quickly check, because I'm pretty sure I didn't know who I was against last week either. Um, next week, I'm against MWC. Who is MWC? Minnesota Wild Charge, managed by Sharp Dress Gaming. So we are coming for you, dude. We're on a good run of form at the moment, and uh, I, I see no sign of that stopping. So I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Uh, goodbye.